if you want to fundamentally change society, you first have to break it. And it's only when you break it is when you can remold the pieces into your vision of a new, of a new society. If you're collecting data on people you're profiling, then that gives you more insight that you can use to know how to segment the population. Shall we play a game? Which side do you want? <laughs> to keep their messaging about issues that you care about and language and imagery that they're likely to engage. We, we do that in America and in Africa. And that's what we do as a company. We have operations starting in Venice, Sao Paulo, Beijing. Gathering intelligence is a huge part of corporate enthusiasm now. Talk to us about that. Yeah, so... Um... Gleaning that intelligence for opponents suddenly opens a door onto an altogether different form of data gathering. We have relationships with specialist organizations that do that kind of work. You know who the opposition is, you know their secrets, you know their tactics. Um, contact information about phone numbers, instant messaging screen names, anything you want to tell, interests, what books you like, movies, and most importantly, who your friends are. And then you can browse around and see who people's friends are and just check out people's online identities and see how people portray themselves and just find some interesting information about people. The two fundamental human drivers when it comes to taking information on board effectively are hopes and fears, and many of those are unspoken, and even unconscious. You didn't know that that was a fear until you saw something that just evoked that reaction from you. And our job is to drop the bucket further down the well than anybody else, to understand what are those really deep-seated underlying fears. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Here's an interesting fact about fake news. It does not have a universally accepted definition. Manipulation of content is not so much the curation for the benefit of the user experience, but rather censorship to produce and manipulate emotional responses. It has to happen without anyone thinking, hey, that's propaganda. Because the moment you think that's propaganda, then the next question is, who put that out? So we have to be very subtle. They hide behind Twitter hashtags, Facebook ads, and fake news stories. They're the work of bots and trolls. So how do these entities actually work? When creating a hoax, the cardinal rule is to never reveal that it is a hoax. However, in doing so, it establishes an automatic consensus belief in the hoax, or at least the reality of its fiction. But what if the real hoax was that it was not a hoax? We have campaigning efforts to control the action, the reaction, and the reaction to the reaction. It's no good fighting a campaign on the facts because actually it's all about the emotion and understanding how to anticipate and discipline that emotion for your needs. Savchuk told us the trolls based in the office building on Savushkina Street are still hard at work. Tactical measures are necessary to rattle the cage and calibrate perception. You're just not meant to know everything. It won't have the same effect otherwise. These measures are holistic shocks to the system, a form of vaccination where through trauma we become stronger. It will be a recursive format where form, function, content and interpretation form a closed circle, uh, a self-oiling machine.
salvation.